Hello and welcome back to another AIC Productions video with your host Carl. I am doing a follow-up video on the comparison between my Lenovo IdeaPad 120S and my HP Stream 11 Pro G4EE. So there are a couple things I didn't discuss in my last video that I really should have and I wanted to go over those things now um, while I'm remembering to do so. First and foremost, one thing I failed to mention in my last video is that the um, HP comes out of the box with Windows 10 S. Now Windows 10 S is, in theory, a great idea. Basically, it only allows you to install applications from the App Store, just like you would on an iPad or an Android tablet. Unfortunately, the drawback is, is that the Windows App Store is a flaming pile of poo. It is absolutely the worst. And fortunately, the HP Stream 11 Pro G4 EE allows you for free to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. And Windows 10 Pro is more expensive than the Windows 10 Home that comes on the... Um, IdeaPad 120S. So you get a more robust operating system, especially if you do something like home networking or you're going to use this for work or something like that. Uh, you get more with the Windows 10 Pro than you do with the Windows 10 Home. And that for me is important because I am going to fairly soon here, hopefully I, the project started a while ago, but then we ended up moving and had to put it to the side. I'm going to be setting up a home network um, so that I can better control uh, things like internet access and things like that for my kids as they are getting online more. My oldest is eight, so I have a little bit of time to get this implemented. But anyway, so for me, having Windows 10 is, is a nice feature. But I did have to go through, and there are a couple steps you have to go through to update it. Basically, you come down here to change product key, and it lets you do it for free. So there is that. Now the next thing that I wanted to talk about is something that's been annoying the crap out of me on the Lenovo. So because it only has 32 gigs of storage, I run into this problem a lot. Um, the Lenovo is not letting me complete Windows updates because there's not enough space on the drive. And this is, whenever you get these big cumulative updates, it tries to download and it fails. Something about it is, is broken. And so you have to go through and you have to figure out where you have files stored that you can delete and things like that. And I have almost nothing on this computer. I literally installed Chrome, uh, Steam, but I didn't install any Steam games. Um, and I installed the performance monitor and I have Cinebench on it, which we're going to look at here in a minute. So I have, this is about as stock as it can be, minus all the bloatware. I, I haven't un uninstalled any bloatware on the HP yet, but I went through and uninstalled all the bloatware I could on the 120S to free up spacing. Of course, I don't like the bloatware anyways. So that's one of the problems I run, I've run into a lot with these 32 gig systems, is this will eventually resolve itself. They'll break up the install or something to get this working correctly to install and update correctly, but that is not a problem I have on the systems with the uh, 64 gigs and of storage and up. It's just with these 32 gig systems, just because Windows by itself, you know, it consumes half your available storage. You know, it's a 32 gig drive, but you know, with uh, formatting and a few other things, you probably have about 28 gigs actually usable, and Windows by itself takes up half that. So, you really don't have a lot of space, and these Windows Update like to see at least 10 gigs free on your drive. Well, you only have 5 gigs worth of space to use up before you're choking this system from being able to do those Windows Updates. So, I'll get this resolved at some point soon, uh, just not before I wanted to release this video. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Passmark. So, I ran Passmark on both of these. And we're going to look at the numbers here. Uh, some of the numbers that people usually look at are like the 2D and 3D graphics. The 3D graphics are actually exactly the same, 391.3. The 2D graphics are off from each other by just 
uh, two and a half points. So 25, uh, 254.5 and 257. Uh, where things start to deviate is the first thing here that tests, and that's the CPU mark. The uh, HP is almost 800 points, or it is more than 800 points higher than it is on, or excuse me, it is almost 800 points higher than it is on the Lenovo. So, you know, that is a huge difference. And we'll go over what that looks like here for things like gaming and just overall usage. Uh, the memory mark is higher. Once again, I don't think the memory actually is any faster, but there's four gigs versus just two gigs. And so from a cold boot, a fresh um, start on these systems, you're actually going to have a much more usable system because you're going to have a lot less things swapped to the drive because you have enough store, uh, space in the memory, which means a much faster performing system. And the disc mark, I, again, that's within margin of error, I think, on these EMMC. I don't think that the HP is any faster. That's probably has that higher number probably has more to do with the available, total available space over the Lenovo. So, um, once again, uh, not a huge difference, but definitely will make a difference, oh, let me exit this, where it counts. So percentile on the Lenovo is 15th percentile and percentile on the HP is 18th percentile. So uh, let's go ahead and close these bad boys up and we're going to open up uh, Cinebench and we're going to run the CPU load and I will show you what that difference is with the um, almost 800 higher points uh, in the performance test. So we're going to go ahead and click run at the same time. And you can see that the HP loads faster, and because it has four cores to work with, it's just going to stomp all over the Lenovo as far as completing this test. The CPUs actually run at the same speed, 1.10 gigahertz. They're the same uh, family of processor, so they come from uh, the same um, die, they have the same... Uh, nanometer size, I mean, they're, they're basically the same, it's just the 3450 just has two additional cores. They both are running Intel HD Graphics 500. They're both 64-bit processors, but with the additional memory and the two additional cores, it is not much of a contest. You can just see it's chewing through this test without much problem. And I'll go ahead and fast forward this to the end. So we'll see you get back with you here in a moment. And we're gonna get to the point where the HP is finished. And then we'll uh, figure out how long it takes for the Lenovo to finish afterwards. All right, and so there's just a few blocks left here on the HP, and we have a score of 159. So I know that's not great. My desktop score is significantly better um, with that. But, you know, for a less than $250 laptop, that's not bad. So we're going to see from the time I got the score on the HP we will give a time and it has a lot left to go so um, we'll go ahead and speed this up but I will tell you how long that takes I'll put it in a note uh, stating what that is we will be back in another few few seconds here
All right, so we have finished, and we ended up with a score of 87, which is a little more than half of the HP score, which is what you would expect with basically doubling up the cores, you're going to get nearly twice the speed. Um, and it was... I don't have an exact number uh, yet. I'll pull one up while I'm editing the video, but... Um, it was about four minute difference, which is huge. Um, I was, just for fun, I ran to the bench on my desktop while I was uh, running it. Uh, between when the HP ended and the uh, Lenovo ended, I was actually able to run a full uh, benchmark on my desktop. I came out score like 630 something. Uh, but anyway, so this again was just a, um, a performance comparison between the two. I will be doing individual gaming tests with these two laptops here in the next couple of weeks. If you have any suggestions on what games to play, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to, to match those. Now, um, remember, these don't have a lot of storage because I can't, I can't play huge games. Um, I don't believe there's enough space on these to play f games like Fortnite. Um, and if a game costs money and I don't have it, unless somebody wants to gift that to me, um, I probably won't be playing that just because, um, you know, I do this all with my own money. None of this is paid, and so it all costs me money. So, anyways, thank you for watching. hope this was informative and helpful for you. Uh, again, let me know what games, uh, you, what suggestions for games you would like to give me in the comments section down below. And I hope you have an amazing day.